Hello people, Better here from Better Collector, and today we're going to do the first Q&A here on the channel. So I did ask all of you over the past week to let me know, either in the Discord or on YouTube, if you had any questions for me so I could do a Q&A as questions were starting to build up. So I'm just going to try to answer at the best of my abilities, and hopefully it'll either answer your questions, or at least I'll try to give you some thoughts to perhaps come up with your answer. So without wasting too much of your time, let's just get started. So the first question is a bit long, which but good morning. First of all, congratulations on the work you develop in the channel. Thanks a lot, which I appreciate for the pragmatic perspective and mathematical approach to invest in collect borrowing cards, especially from the European market point of view. Thanks a lot. So I'd like to propose you an idea for a future video. How do you view the European market for graded cards? So how do I view it? So I mean, I'm in Italy. If you if you didn't know, I see that just cards do sell in the European market. I've seen that in Italy especially. I mean, I can only talk about the Euro Italian market when it comes to single countries within the European Union. I mean, I only invest in English product, but I can see that it's Italians don't like English cards. I also think it's something that has to do with the language. I think in Northern European countries, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Germany as well, they do tend to know English more than we do. I think especially applies to, I'm talking average here, Italy, Spain, and Portugal, but and France. But nevertheless, I do see people buying credit cards. And to also answer the question number three, do, do I see any future relevance for emerging European gaming companies? Most of the cards that I see selling are either from PSA or Beckett's. Now, again, talking about the Italian market, so Italians selling usually in, selling in Italy, they, as I was saying, they tend to either buy and sell Italian or Japanese. They don't buy nor sell as much. Obviously, if, if there's a buyer, there must be a seller. English and they do also have some Italian companies which are emerging. One is Grad, another one is AI Graden. They're both Italian. They are cheaper than, uh, I mean, it, they are cheaper to grade compared to PSA if you also factor in the fact that you need to ship to the US. But, uh, you know, I don't see any request a gold star, charge their base set. I don't see any first edition fossil jungle being sold in um, the for, for of those companies so to answer question number three i think it's only psa and beckett psa is the main one beckett follows and cgc has had some controversial news i think also there was a case with a pikachu illustrator that got a cgc 10 a while back and uh, if you looked at the scan it wasn't a 10 at least it didn't look like it so that's kind of I thought. Th I hope that answers question number three, one and three. Question number two is currently out of the market platform best one in Europe. So when it comes to buying and selling cards, I do think car market is on top of the competitors. When it comes to higher hand cards, I think eBay. When we're talking ju about just the EU, is something to keep in mind, and uh, mainly because you can see the card. You know it's. It's graded, but you want to see it so you can look for the, the certain numbers. You can look at the scan if it's PSA. I'm actually, I don't remember if you can do that the same for BGS cards, but if it's you know, PSA, you can look at the scan. You can just expect it on the f picture that you have up on the listing. So yeah, car market, a great one. I wonder if they're ever going to come up with the auctions on car market, even though I don't think that's really... They, they don't want to compete with uh, companies like eBay on, on that matter. But uh, yeah, I do think it's probably the best place to to buy cards. And obviously, there's private groups that are so respectable. If you the problem with private groups is that, you know, you need if you're buying the seller must have references. Otherwise, I don't and it's always a risk. So car market obviously acts as a third party as TG Play would do. And uh, I, I think on TG Play you're not allowed to message, if I'm not mistaken, the seller. Whereas on Car Market you can, and uh, that's I think it's a big plus 
if I'm if I'm not American and uh, you're watching, uh, let me know if on TCG Player you are you able are you allowed to message the seller if if you want to ask for pictures or anything, and uh, if not, then uh, big big plus for a car market. So that was the first one, which is actually three. Question number two is. Are you working on a model to predict future prices of single cars depending on supply and demand? The answer is, it's on the to-do list. If you've been following the channel, you know that I'm busy with my last exam so that I can graduate. I study math, I've been saying that too. I believe probably you guys are tired of, of hearing that. So I'm very busy right now, but uh, it is in the making. I'm trying always to develop as much as I can what it's already working on um, the bot. So all the functionalities on the Discord bot which also obviously involves supply and demand as much as trying to collect as much data as I can. So what you asked is in the making. It's going to be hard. Um, I do have some ideas. I did take one econometrics class back in the days when I was having my dark period in, at the econ department that didn't last much. But uh, yeah, it is in the making and hopefully I will be able to start working on it um, ASAP. So the following questions come from Discord members. The first one is, it's about Team Rocket. Um, so obviously we know that the study is coming in the second half of um, SV, when vintage flirts with modern. So first question is impact on vintage. So to answer that, I will not answer, but I will say, I mean, my answer is, I don't know. You could look at data and by looking at history, you could think you've had evolutions, you've had 151, which are the one that I can think of on top of my mind. So evolution, we know that that got printed to oblivion. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happened for Team Rocket as well. 151, we know there's a lack of supply relative to its demand, which could make us think a reprint is going to come. Now for evolution, you get a booster boxes, which is a big plus in my opinion, and you don't for 151, obviously English 151, not Japanese. So I think you can look at those sets, see how they're performing, we both know, especially with um, evolutions. You could also argue that evolution happened in 2016, then you got the boom of Pokemon Go, and then you got the 2020, 2021 boom. So you could also argue that. However, they're doing well, despite these events, which, I mean, you could factor in your decision in your decision making process and um, yeah that's uh, that's all I can think of but if I want to relate my experience to Yu-Gi-Oh Yu-Gi-Oh if you if you're not aware has reprinted the first six sets last year uh, summer August and they're doing well they're, and they unlike Pokemon they actually reprinted the same cards in the same format so they didn't like reprint less with Dragon but they changed the artwork like Pokemon likes to do. They also tend to implement different artworks. They just reprinted it as if it was the OG. It was just the card stock was different, much worse in my opinion. The, the quality is just awful. And uh, but it's those are doing well, and it's gonna happen again with another set from the GX era, Light of Destruction. And uh, again, it's gonna be the complete same. So if we look at Yu-Gi-Oh. So another TCG, those are doing well, and they got printed the same exact. It was, it was as if you got a reprint of a base set, the same cards, same booster box, just maybe with a label that said uh, 30th anniversary, same thing. So I think also you could look at there and see how those are performing. Now, question number two, input on previous sets. I mean, I would tell you the same thing, look at uh, evolutions, look at 151 and see what happened to the previous sets. So I, I don't think it's going to have a, a big impact. I mean, you could argue 151 had an impact on Obsidian. Many argue it got shadowed. I don't know. You, you could, I mean, there's many things you think about. And uh, investable, I don't even know what the cards are. So I don't, unlike many other people like to talk about sets before they come out. I don't even watch him after a month or two from release. So I guess I'm, I guess we'll try to answer that in the next Q and A. So second one is from uh, Mr. Master Set. Well, big shout out, go check him out. Is doing an amazing job uh, on a new channel. I'll leave you the link as I'm talking most likely. 
is uh, Master Tech Collector, as the name says. Big, big uh, W for it, for Jack. So I don't believe in efficient markets. I think behavioral economics would apply more for investing with people emotionally leading to some rational spending. I acknowledge that you'll be more well-versed in those areas than me. Thoughts? So I did talk about the image hypothesis in the Pokemon market. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not an economist, so let alone a behavioral economist. So from my knowledge, what I study, um, I mean, you could argue you're saying, you know, people, emotions leading to buying. So they're buying because other people are buying. So you could argue it's just they buy because they are aware that people are buying. So there's an additional piece of information that got into the puzzle. So other people are buying. That's why they're buying. Or uh, when it comes to buyouts because cards are playable, that's a real, very good example of market being efficient. You got the news that a card is playable. So a piece of information is added into the puzzle and people buy because of that. So market finds a new equilibrium because of that piece of information. So you could argue it is efficient in that way. But other than that, I don't want to talk about things that uh, I don't know. And last but not least, I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. I'm, I'm going to butcher it. Uh, do you have access to a distributor? Do you mainly buy uh, out of a uh, car market? Do you know what are the distributor prices for PBB, EDBs, or have a good approximation? So number one, do I have access to distributors? No. Do I mainly buy out of come market? It depends. I do have some contacts, so I do have some sellers and some other people I buy boxes from. But when it, when it comes to singles, I only buy out of car market or uh, Facebook groups or uh, you know third parties. When it comes to booster boxes, I do have a contact. I have a couple of contacts. And uh, am I aware of the distro prices? Kind of. So when it comes to the US, you can go look at the American prices. I think they are between 88 to 92 dollars. Could be less. That's what I heard uh, Brian from uh, Pokiani talking about. I think it. I, I don't know if it depends on the set. What I know about uh, EU prices, and this comes off a reliable source from someone who does have access to distros. I. I've been told I cannot say, but what I can say is look at what sellers, so sellers that, not private sellers, but resellers, sellers that do have access to distributors, look at what are they selling for, look at the lowest prices, you can go look at, you know, Games Island, and what I'm thinking about, there's Kells in Denmark, Denmark, look at their lowest boxes available, the lowest, and that's probably... I can tell you that if they don't go below that, there must be a reason. And also be aware, margins on sealed are very slim. So you can do the math. And also, I have been told that if you are a physical game store, so if you do own a, a place where you sell carts, then you have lower district prices than if you are on an online store. I don't know if it only applies to Italians or uh, it's a EU thing or even a worldwide thing that it's because of Pokemon, but uh, that's what I've been told. So that's all I can say and that's all I know. That being said, guys, I think we're going to end it here. Don't put up your side ready, wasting a lot of your time. I think we went uh, longer than expected. Again, Hope you appreciate the answers. If you want to do another Q&A, just let me know down in the comments the questions for the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. You guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.